Hi, how are you guys? So, uh, this is Michelle from Pooch Parenting, and I wanted to pop in and answer a question that I got from somebody on my Facebook group. And she was talking to me about how she's getting a puppy soon, and she has a two-year-old at home. And she wanted to know how she could prepare her toddler for the impending changes in the house when the puppy comes home. Um, in her case, she said her toddler seems to be really gentle and a good listener, which is really super. Not all two-year-olds are. Um, so that may kind of play into my answer with um, a variety of other people and how they can prepare their toddlers. But let's assume that we do have a gentle toddler who um, tends to listen, which would be really great. Um, and there's a variety of things that you can do. So if you know that you have a... Um, a puppy coming home soon, then what I would encourage you to do is set up the area in the house where the puppy is going to be spending a bunch of time and uh, and get the toddler used to leaving that space um, as sort of a puppy zone and as a not toddler zone. Um, so for example, if you're using a baby gate to keep the puppy contained in a certain part of the house, one part of the kitchen for example, while you're in the other part with your baby, um, then you can sort of teach the toddler that within a certain distance of the gate, then that's sort of a no-go zone. Um, not all two-year-olds are developmentally capable of following those kinds of directions, but you can definitely start modeling that sort of behavior early on. Um, I find that using painter's tape on the floor, because uh, it doesn't leave any marks like that blue painter's tape, you can make a spot on the floor and have that be a, a no, no kid zone if you want. Um, the other thing you can do, hi Cameron, uh, the other thing you can do is you can get what's called a play yard or an X pen. And a play yard is great if you have little kids and if you're, especially if you're planning on having more kids because you can use the play yard as a way of containing either the child or as a way of containing the dog. Um, X-Pens are great too. They're meant for dogs and they come in all different heights. So if you have a dog or puppy that's a climber, which some are, or a jumper, um, then you can get really tall ones and make it harder for them. But to prepare your two-year-old for the puppy coming home, you can set up the X-Pen in the part of the house where you want the puppy to be spending some time hopefully near you where it can be part of the action and teach the toddler that that's a spot where they are not welcome at at that time we never want a, a puppy feeling trapped we don't want a, a dog feeling like it's stuck somewhere and can't escape if a toddler comes running and screaming with some noisy toys and stuff so um, we want to make sure that the dog feels like whatever place you contain it is a safe place and you can you know prepare it with special toys or bones or whatever the puppy's going to enjoy while it's in there so that's one thing that you can do to prepare a two-year-old for a puppy coming home um two-year-olds are developmentally not quite ready for things like reward charts i do on my pooch parenting website i do have a reward chart that's really great for kids that are probably about three and a half or older where you can start teaching the child um, about how to pet gently and how to interact with the dog and that's going to be something that takes a really long time um, and a lot of parent support um, we talk a lot about um, you know having the parent learn like to help the toddler guide their hand so it's really gentle on um, on a dog. You can practice that again uh, on a stuffed animal or something like that before the actual puppy comes home. Um, I have a puppy. I'm going to turn it around just so you can see her sitting outside. And she's working on a bone and I filled it with some wet food and it's been in the freezer. So I prepared some activities that puppy can do sometimes when I'm busy doing other things. And when you have a toddler in the house, I would actually encourage you to do the same kind of thing. So maybe come up with some ideas that are special for your toddler, for your two-year-old, where you have some special um, time with the two-year-old while the puppy is resting, and vice versa, where you are able to give the two-year-old something to do while you play with the puppy. Puppies need a lot of work, and I know this because I've been living it all summer, and you really want to make sure that you are able to put in some one-on-one -on -one time. And two-year-olds are not always napping anymore. Sometimes they are if you're lucky, but um, you can't just sort of count on the toddler to tolerate you spending time with the pup. So um, early training for the two-year-old is perfect, just like you're going to need to be doing early training with the puppy. So activities that they can do um, independently of one another are really important. If you have any other questions, please let me know. I'm going to try to be doing 
a bunch of Facebook Lives with um, some excellent questions that I've been getting, a lot of which revolve around safety, um, puppies licking toddlers' faces, which makes us kind of uncomfortable and we can talk about why. Um, but I like to pop on and share people's questions and how I answer them so that I can help other people too. Um, but if you need more support, I'm super happy to help you. You can reach me by visiting my website, which is poochparenting.net or on Pooch Parenting here on Facebook. And I do remote consults for issues that are not really safety related, like serious safety related, where you really need a behavior counselor um, on site, but I can help with a lot of people's questions remotely. Um, and if you're local in the San Francisco Bay Area, I might be able to come to you and help support you and your family and your dog so you all can live happily ever after and um, manage things effectively and keep everybody happy and with a little bit less stress because puppies are hard and toddlers are hard and when you do them at the same time it's super hard. Cameron can probably tell you that. All right, I'm gonna sign off. I hope you guys are well and I'll be back another time soon. Again, poochparenting.net if you need anything or oh, how to help during feeding times. Okay, Cameron, do you want me to answer that really quick now? Since I'm here, I guess I can do that. It's a good question. Okay, um, are you saying feeding times like with your newborn? Cause that's really important or are you thinking feeding times like the family's eating dinner and you don't know what to do with the puppy, please. Okay, all right, I'm gonna answer both of those, I think. So if you have a baby in the house, a newborn, let's say you are, it doesn't matter if you're bottle feeding or breastfeeding, let's say you're sitting in a rocking chair in a room somewhere and your dog may or may not have the kind of manners that you're hoping for. So the dog might be, oh, feeding the puppy. Okay, well, let me finish this one since I started. That's a really good question. Okay, so anyway, if the dogs don't have great manners and they're up in your business, then we need to work on some alternate behaviors um, or containing the dog during the time when you really have your hands full and you can't be bothered. So that's something to think about. Um, in terms of feeding the puppy, um, there's a lot that you can do um, to keep we want to make sure that the toddler doesn't bother the puppy when it's eating um, and so sometimes we recommend if you have um, a crate some people like crates some people don't but if you have a crate in the living space of your house where it's sort of included where you all are then what you can do is you can feed the puppy in the crate that'll help make a good affiliation for the puppy to go into the crate where it feels like a really great place to be um, and that way the toddler cannot bother the puppy however i need to say that a puppy in a crate is a trapped puppy and we do not want the toddler rushing up to the crate and stressing out the dog. So in that case, um, you know, maybe that's a time when your two year old is in the high chair and is also eating. So everybody is eating all at the same time, which is really useful. Um, if you're really nervous that the two year old is not gonna respect the puppy in the crate, then maybe the crate needs to be in a different room, laundry room, bedroom, wherever with the door closed and um, eating time is kind of sacred time. There are other things that you can do too though, where you can build a relationship with the toddler and the puppy um, through food because a lot of puppies, like the one that I'm raising now, she's super food motivated and she'll do anything for food. Um, but again, she is like a land shark and her teeth are super sharp. So I would not be having a two-year-old feed her by hand. But what you can do is have, um, you can have a toddler grab a handful of kibble and throw it on the floor and then the puppy can run around and go hunt for it. Um, that's one strategy where then the puppy is gonna see the two-year-old as the deliverer of amazing things. But again, you really, if the puppy's gonna get over aroused, then we wanna be super careful about um, how the puppy can interact with the toddler if the toddler is throwing treats. So um, sometimes you can do that from the other side of a barrier, although I don't know any two-year-olds that have excellent aim. So if they're tossing treats, they may not be tossing them where you want them to. So that's something to think about. You can also have the two-year-old take some kibble and sprinkle it in your backyard or whatever by throwing it all over the place. And then you can bring the toddler inside and put the puppy outside and let the puppy sniff for the food. So that's another safe way of um, having the toddler feed the puppy. Um, but if you wanna feed the puppy in the house, have it be somewhere where it's not gonna be disturbed. And if you wanna turn it into a relationship building game, that's a super idea also. Cameron, did that answer your question? Or did I totally go off on some weird Michelle track? Are you still there? you can just let me know. Um, you can also leave a comment and I can come back on and fix it or I can answer um, more clarifying questions in the comments. So hopefully I answered your question. Okay, got a thumbs up. All right, I'm hoping I did a good job then. Um, there's so many questions that we can answer. There's like a gajillion of them. The other thing I'm working on too is blog content. So if as parents you guys need some questions answered, ask me and I can turn them into blog posts also. 
Oh, good. I'm glad it helped, Cameron. Thank you. Um, yeah, I want to write blog content that's useful to you. So um, give me ideas. I'm game. All right. Have a wonderful day. I will talk to you guys later. If you have any more questions, Pooch Parenting is where to find me. Have a good one. Bye.